Welcome to another episode of Let's Code on IBM Expert TV. My name is Neil Patterson, your host for today. And I'm pleased to have with me uh, Garish and Amal, who will be taking us through uh, a demonstration of the IBM Developer Technology Sandbox. Uh, welcome uh, to our episode today. Uh, please, uh, Amal, take it away and uh, let us know uh, what we're going to be covering. Sure. Uh, thank you, Neil. Thank you so much for the brief introduction. So, <clears throat> uh, IBM Developer Technology Sandbox. Uh, you might be wondering what it is. So, it, it is like, I would say, a first-of-a-kind platform that will help a user with the different personas. So, maybe, Girish, if you can go to the, uh, the previous one, I'll just like maybe do a quick introduction between you and me. Yeah, so uh, I'm Amol Donse, uh, I'm STSM and IBM Certified Architect. Uh, I work for Digital Technology Labs, and this is the product that um, we have built as a part of the Digital Technology Labs. Proud of this particular product, and we are going to talk about it uh, and give a demo, which uh, you can see, and then you can, you can explore that uh, at your own space. Girish is a lead architect who is responsible for the architecture uh, of the digital technology sandbox. And um, he leads multiple squads as a part of the digital uh, technology sandbox. Uh, so you would be wondering what exactly we are uh, going to talk about when we say a technology sandbox. So this is a first of a kind experience for different kind of personas. Every persona in an organization, be it architects, enterprise architects, enterprise developers, and tech sellers, they will have different need when it comes to any platform or any sandbox. And the technology sandbox is addressing all the needs across these different personas. So imagine an experience where a, a, a developer, an architect, or a sailor uh, can come together who wants to try, explore, and not only play, but experience with the applications or solution through some kind of recommendations in order to explore new technologies. At the same point of time, adopt new te technologies. So that is what the technology sandbox is all about. So one important thing, it is an accelerated application uh, catalog. So as a part of the demo, which you are going to see, the construct is around data fabric and data and AI. So you would be able to see some of the marquee applications around data fabric and data and AI, which you can experience on the sandbox. It is cloud-based IDE platform, wherein you don't need to install anything. You don't need to configure anything. So you just need your browser and that's about it. So when we think about the sandbox, you might be wondering that, okay, now there is an application, then you need to do all the hard work of config configuring the application. At the same point of time, installing all the dependencies that application needs. Also, you may be wondering that the technology support, how you are going to get the technology support on the sandbox. So the technology sandbox that we are coming up with takes care of all this particular areas where every user will get their own workspace, which is pre-baked, pre-cooked with all the dependencies of the application. At the same point of time, it will lower the barriers, lower the friction when someone is trying to experience the application. So they really don't need to worry about any configuration. They really don't need to worry about uh, any libraries or any installation, everything would be available as a part of interactive guided no code experience to them. So in a nutshell, you don't need to really worry about what technology it is. 
you you don't need to aware about whether this is a react application this is using like maybe cloud pack for data or cloud pack for integration it provides a complete no code framework where with couple of clicks you would be able to see and experience an application so it it is trying to reduce the amount of time that a developer and architect at the same point of time tech seller uses in order to build an application or even they spend days together in order to build the application but sandbox provides all those things as a part of or as a part of the workspace then once you are able to experience the application you would be wondering that okay i have experienced the application and let's take an example or let's take a persona of a developer who wants to maybe modify the application modify the solution relaunch the solution everything is provided as a single pane of glass inside the technology sandbox so developer would be able to explore code architect would be able to explore code at the same point of time they would be able to do customizations that they are looking for and relaunch the application with a click of button so it is just not only getting awareness about new technology anyone and everyone can explore the application customize the application in the sandbox at the same point of time they can relaunch the application now you would be wonder, wondering that once the application is relaunched with the customization now if they want to use this particular application as a part of their solution that they are trying to build for a customer for a project for a product how they can use this particular building blocks so the sandbox is pre configured with git integration where a seamless way to get the code from the sandbox to their own github repo is available and they would be able to use this code in order to build the solution that they are looking for let's say someone customizes their the application that is available on the sandbox they would be able to take this customized code and get it on the github repo another important piece is currently we are supporting three or four areas from different persona perspective we are supporting node framework we are supporting python we are supporting jupiter labs at the same point of time we are supporting golang as well but this particular sandbox framework is easily extensible and you just need to add the libraries in the workspace and you are good to go so it provides you an end to end way around new technologies at the same point of time you would be able to add technologies as well so i would stop over here and let's see it in action so girish uh, do you mind like maybe talking about what exactly what what all applications are there so this is the home page that uh, you would see when you go to developer.ibm dot com slash sandbox and and girish like maybe let's uh, walk through all the things that is available as of today yeah sure amol thank you so yeah uh, currently on the uh, technology sandbox homepage we have a uh, selected few applications that we have been able to onboard and i would sort of categorize these applications into three buckets right the first one is around those applications which uh, showcase the uh, data fabric data and ai sets play basically making use of ibm cloud services ibm cloud pack for data services within them so we have video analysis certain bank loan specific application agriculture related and a customer churn prediction which makes use of services around speech to text uh, tone analyzer and uh, and machine learning right we then have a set of uh, application which is the anomaly and data quality which are uh, application which are coming from ibm research so we we had a, we joined them together and we had specific solutions 
uh, which which will help developers to understand how these APIs can be leveraged in, into a solution. Uh, the third set is around something we call as integrated, progressive integrated applications, wherein uh, we, we have one solution which uses a particular API. Let's say the travel assistant uses the weather API. But we also have given an option wherein uh, the same application, now that for travel, weather is important, but at the same time, location services would be something that would be critical. So there are options wherein the real technologies uh, APIs could be easily integrated into the same application right within the same sandbox session. And we could have a more meaningful travel assistant that can be uh, used as, as a complete solution for, for, for a travel uh, scenario that we are looking at. So those are the sets uh, among that we currently have on the on the sandbox. Yeah, I, I think this looks uh, interesting, Girish. Uh, so, so I see like maybe something around data five big data and AI research application and and combination of a third party or a partner as well as IBM technology and building those right. together. Uh, so anomaly and and data quality, I see like they fall like maybe in the category of industry four dot so we have a, a data fabric story. We have an industry 4.0 story as well. Uh, right. The risk prediction for bank application, uh, I, I I think that's an interesting one. So uh, would you mind like uh, showing how a user would be able to experience this particular application on the sandbox? Definitely. OK, so let me start with that since you asked for it. So, uh, so within these separate tiles, which, which actually call out different application, when I on the home page uh, click on the that particular tile for the uh, bank loans, uh, it will then take me uh, to the technology sandbox environment. There's a separate tab that opens up, which will then load the sandbox for me. Uh, I will be first getting on to the uh, landing page for the sandbox, wherein I get to know, OK, I have come here for the risk prediction uh, and, and the quick features around what the sandbox is about. Uh, so just to point out, uh, currently, the technology sandbox is provided to the to a developer for a period of four hours for a particular session. That means the session is active for that particular period. And within that period, the developer can try out multiple solutions, play around with those solutions, and then, as Amol said, push their uh, sample code that is available into their Git repository for further adoption. But post that four hours, of course, the developer can come back and start a completely new session and probably experience uh, all the solutions once again. Uh, so from the landing page, I will get on to the actual developer environment. Uh, and this is a quick carousel which will tell the developer what to expect in the in the developer environment via screenshots, right? So there is a navigation pane panel that is listing out various information, uh, a set of menus which will guide the developer to how to use it. Uh, set of instructions, we will get to it in more detail about how this is useful. Uh, the progress of how each application is going through as, as the developer runs through the steps. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, when the application is launched, uh, we, we can see how the, how the application shows up, the sample application is displayed. Uh, so let me skip through this now. Okay, so this, this is the development environment that you first see. And I'll start with the one wherein we have this interactive readme which we call as the didact technology here. So we have a quick uh, explanation of what this application is, right? It's a risk prediction, basically, where a bank loan agent could use this to understand how, what is the risk involved for a particular customer in order to disperse a loan, right? Uh, quick explanation of the execution flow, how the application would be going through, what are the different aspects that we would be creating and learning through. Some uh, links for learning before the developer runs to them. Uh, I think we need to you know that there is something on what this, what, what a bank loan department would be doing in order, in order to uh, create this particular risk prediction. Uh, the included components within the application, currently we use the IBM uh, Cloud Object Storage, Watson Machine Learning, and Studio. So we have a quick uh, links to each of them in, in case the developer wants to get comfortable with what these services are so that they are more comfortable using them. And what is it required before you actually start with it? We need a cloud account because we are, of course, using the cloud services. And we need to make sure that we have a cloud pack for data account uh, because we will be deploying our application into that, or we will be creating the models that are required in, in my cloud pack for data account. 
Now we have gone through, we have made sure we are ready for it. Now we have a timeline, we have a set of instructions which will take us through step by step uh, through how the application can be uh, tried out within this particular sandbox environment. So I run through each uh, uh, action that is available here as part of this timeline and we'll see how we are able to uh, get to the final outcome. So I will have a terminal that is opened up which this has a terminal which has all the required utilities baked into it for us to build it and launch the application. Uh, I, I then get to uh, pull the code that is required as part of the sample application. So as you see, I have the didact, I have the terminal below which will show the complete progress for a developer and the developer understands what exactly is happening. Now that I have the code, I will pull down the dependencies. So based on what type of application is it, is it a React, is it a Python based, we know the libraries that are required and that will get pulled in as part of this and the developer gets to know what exactly are the libraries, why are we needing it and what is the progress that's, that's happening once uh, the dependencies are pulled in. So that completes it. Now that I'm using cloud services, I need to make sure that I log in to my IBM cloud account and uh, uh, to get to the IBM cloud account, there is a uh, uh, one time code that I need. Let me try to grab that and quickly come back and uh, and log in into my account right from within the sandbox. There it is. Okay, uh, I think we've got something. Let me give it one more try from here. Okay, there it is. So I have my code that I get here. I'll copy this, come back here. Uh, paste it here and that will now, at least for this particular session, this particular sandbox session, I will be now logged in into my cloud account and I would be able to create the required services right from within the sandbox on my IBM uh, cloud account. So as you see, I wouldn't need to, okay, let me start with creation of the services. There it goes. So it's starting to create the services. As you see, I'm not moving out of my sandbox environment to go to my cloud account. The services would be created right from this particular session. And we can see in the terminal that the cloud object storage has been created next. The, yeah, the, yeah, we see the, uh, all the other services that are, that are, that are required that is part of it that, that, that gets created as well within it, the Watson Studio and the Watson Machine Learning Services. Yeah, the so services Girish, are created. Yeah, Girish, one quick question here. So um, the, the user just need to like register to the IBM cloud and that's about it. So they really don't need to like go to the IBM cloud to create these particular services. So uh, we are talking about like an in-app experience. The only piece that is needed is like maybe an authentication token or a one-time password, right. which they can, they can get uh, by, by clicking on the link that is provided. And once the password is yeah. available, they put that on the terminal and they are good to go. Okay, that's interesting. Yes, yeah, exactly. So for that particular session, at least the, the, the key will allow them to access their services. And as you said, yes, they don't move out of the sandbox environment at all to get to any of the services. You'll find it interesting as we go ahead. Uh, now we have talked about cloud uh, services. We'll talk about the cloud pack for data. So uh, I'll go ahead and generate an API key, which is actually required to access the model that I'll be using. And now is where the cloud pack for data access comes in. Uh, I, I will go ahead and create a deployment space uh, which is needed to add my particular model there. And as you see that the, in the, again in the terminal, you see the progress of the deployment space getting created. And also to add, the developer might not be completely sure of what a deployment space is, but they would still be able to try out this application and play around with it without being completely aware because the sandbox will take them through the experience of how uh, application which uses cloud services and cloud pack for the data services will be can be experienced without a complete information. Of course, they can go back. There are links given wherein they can go back and understand uh, what these services are, what are deployment spaces, how a model is deployed, and but but they get a first-hand experience right there about how they are used in a sample application. So, yeah. so currently the deployment space creation is in progress, and once that completes, we will move on to identify or to get to know how a deployment will happen for a particular model. Yeah, so Girish, so I, th I see two variations. variations. Yeah, so Girish, I see two variations over here. One is uh, uh, one where you go to IBM Cloud and, and create 
uh, the cloud services that are needed to run the application. And now you are going to the cloud pack for data, okay, environment and yes. uh, creating, create, and, and, and in process of like maybe creation of deployment space and, and model as well. So again, uh, one app experience, the user is still on the sandbox. They don't need to move to IBM cloud. They don't need to move to IBM cloud pack for data. Everything is happening inside the sandbox only. Exactly. Yeah. Just one pane of being one pane where in all the information without and, and everything is visible to the developer. The developer gets to know how the progress is. They get an idea of how application is building. Everything is baked into the sandbox and the developer uh, gets a free hand on trying them out uh, within the simple pane without moving out. Yeah. So as we were speaking, I went ahead and clicked on the deploy and the deploy model. So the model has been deployed in my deployment space that was created previously. Now I can go ahead and launch my application. Now, as you see, again, the launch application will not take me out of sandbox. Again, with my preview that is available within the sandbox, the application will be visible. And I get to know that, okay, the terminal is still open. I get to know how the application is going to execute. Now, a risk prediction application, uh, wherein the agent would come to know that based on the customer's parameters, uh, for giving out a loan, what is the risk that is involved? So there are some default parameters like what is the installment percentage, what is the credit count existing for that particular customer, the duration of the loan, uh, what is the employment duration, and many such available information, right? So once this information is available, I, I go ahead and submit this information, and this is when the cloud application will talk to the cloud pack for data model that is deployed. And from that model is where the risk prediction uh, shows up for this particular customer based on the factors that was listed down. So this does say that, okay, the customer has a 30.2% risk and there are some recommended that can be offers that can be given to this customer based on the risk that is there. So these are the parameters that were used. Uh, of course, the agent can come back, go back and then probably try out for a, uh, for a different customer or if, if the parameters change for a particular customer, they can understand how that will change the risk index. So, yeah, so, Girish, so we use uh, of, made use of cloud services. Yeah. Yes, uh, Girish, another, another question. So, so I, I see this is a, a UI based application, which is like maybe in, in React, Node.js. At the same point of time, in the background, you are also creating a model, which is opaque uh, at this point of time. Uh, the yes. deployment sp space getting created. So it is like combination of uh, a UI as well as uh, a machine learning model is is that right? Where uh, a developer yes. need to be aware about a React or a Node technology, they would be able to get this particular stuff. And at the same point of time, in the background, they are going to uh, create the model, call the model, which is I think pre-trained, and uh, you would be able to use the data that is uh, put in the form, the default data. At the same point of time, you can change the data and pass it to the pre-trained model which is going to give you like the prediction. Is that is that right? That's right, Amor, exactly. So yeah, we have the application. And as you see, the developer gets to know everything that's happening, right? The deployment aspect, the pre-trained model that was deployed, the application that came up, and how the application is actually talking to the model uh, that has been deployed previously via this interactive steps that we have. Yeah, so, so that's the experience that the developer would be getting. So, so okay, like now that within, we have a couple of clicks, Girish, within a couple of clicks, uh, which which used to like, if you had to build this application or if you want to like maybe configure this application, it would have taken like maybe, I, I don't know, like understanding some of the cloud services, understanding yes. some of the, the, the data model and, and also like maybe understanding how I can put my React form together. So instead of like maybe exactly. having this up and running in, I don't know, maybe some days or some hours for someone who is uh, highly experienced it is like just getting the experience in i would say 10 minutes exactly that's right yeah yeah just through a few clicks right i think that's where the uh the, the power of this interactive readme that we have which we call the didact comes in just through a few clicks we get this no code experience uh, without the user having to write any code or even needing to configure anything within their cloud pack for data account so, uh, and as we said, with minimal information, they can try out this experience and then go back and explore and understand how this experience uh, application is developed, 
what are the services it used and how do I understand more about the service? Yeah. So, okay, now that I have tried out the application, the developer has made a try. Now, what the developer could next, next do is, okay, let me go ahead and stop it uh, and collapse this. They can go ahead and explore the code, right? Uh, they, they can probably explore what how the application has been built and then they can, uh, of course, the complete source code is available. They can understand what are the different parameters, different uh, code that is involved, what are the different source files that are there. And if the developer feels that they want to try out a small change, probably they have their own model uh, since they understand this application now, they have their own model which they might want to add to this as well. They can go ahead and make the changes in this Apple application. And once they have done it, they can come back and they can relaunch the application. And that would probably bring up the same application within the same preview pane with the changes that the developer has done. So that's where the developer can now explore and play with the application right within the same sandbox session that they had initially launched here. And once they have done that, they now want to adopt this particular source code. They want to probably take this source code with them. That's where the Git feature that is available within the sandbox will help them. Uh, they will be able to run through the Git, Git commands, uh, have, a, have this complete sample source code which they have, pushed to their Git repository and they can probably, now the session will expire after this timeout of four hours. They can probably even refer to their Git repositories and continue adopting the code that is available to them with respect to a bank loan where cloud services and cloud pack for the data services are used. And once, once they have done through this, they have this option of cleanup, wherein whatever services was created within this particular session for this particular application can now be cleaned up from the user's cloud account and the cloud pack for data account so that we don't leave anything left um, for that. So that when they come back and they either try the same application or a different application, they can create fresh set of services and try out the experience of that application differently within the sandbox environment. Yeah, so I think Gish, now, Gish, there, was, there was a question, um, I think that came from Tom, where the question was like, uh, once uh, you are able to experience the application, can you uh, get the code and, and take it back uh, wherein like you can use this as a building block? So I think you have shown that, right? Where the code, the entire code of the application is running in the sandbox and with a couple of clicks with some GitHub uh, instruction, you would be able to take the code back to your GitHub repo. Uh, or like even the exactly. personal re personal GitHub repo or an internet uh, or an enterprise uh, repo as well. Is that right? GitHub? Exactly. Yes, that's right. So the user can log into their enterprise Git repository and they will be able to uh, push the code to, uh, to their repository for, for a later adoption. That, that's right. And there are a set of links, uh, uh, there are a set of FAQs which will take you through certain steps with regard to probably the Git integration or any other information that they are looking for. And in case there are some uh, feedback that the developers would need to give, uh, probably there was some issue, uh, there is a help and support option, uh, which will take them uh, to, to a Git repository wherein they can log in by, by signing in into their Git account. And then they would be able to uh, get a ticket created uh, which of course we will be addressing and, and updating it as, as we get to hear from them. So we would like to hear the feedback from people as they are using it to how, how the sandbox experience felt and if they would really like to see something different, something new uh, within within this particular environment. Yeah, uh, Girish, so quickly, a question. few things. Uh, Girish, there is another question. Uh, let yeah. me uh, try to answer that. So uh, is my sure. use of the, the sandbox time box how long do we have to explore the application? So, so Krista, uh, interesting question. So currently we are providing a, a window of four hours where you can explore the application, you can customize the application. But once uh, that particular four, four hour window is gone, you can come back, you can log in again and still explore other applications. So there is a history of our application that has been maintained as well. So like, let's say if you uh, come to, an, if, if you want to explore anomaly detection, you came from anomaly detection and then your four hours window is gone, you can re-log in, 
uh, on the same sandbox with a new workspace, but you, you would be maintained with the historical data of the application. But during this particular four hours, if you have customized the code uh, for a specific application, you have to take the code back to the to your own GitHub repo. Because we this is as Girish mentioned, this is an ethereal workspace where we this is not a persistent one where we are not uh, tracking all the changes that you made to the application at the same point of time. Uh, we are not maintaining those changes for a sandbox because every time you come up, come in after four hours, you would be able to get a new workspace. But at the same point of time, the history of the applications that you have visited previously would be still intact. Yeah, yes. sorry. And just to add about, yeah, yeah, just to add to the point, other than yeah, history is of course there, which will be useful. Uh, there are a set of feature application which might interest uh, the user as well, right? I, I came in here for the risk prediction, but we have a set of uh, other application which might be something that the developer might want to try. For example, as we have seen in the homepage as well, there was one around how a smart assistant, the Watson assistant could be used in order to identify a particular crop based on the location that they, they want to uh, probably grow that particular crop in. And then there is something on churn prediction when they understand if a customer could churn based on certain factors that uh, that could be listed down as well. So uh, history is one. The feature replication is also one that would be useful uh, when a user comes in. And as you see, I have currently opened up the anomaly detection interactive readme, the didact, and it has a very similar experience about how we went through for the bank loans application as well, right? A set of learning resources, what APIs are included, what are the prerequisites, and the timeline of instructions uh, that the developer will want to go through. So the experience is uniform across all the solutions that are available in the sandbox. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the attempt that we have made. Yeah, so there is quick question. So I, I see a timeline over here. So like, let's say it might happen that uh, I, I I have done a get code. I traverse back to like maybe yes. something, some work that I am doing. And then I come back and, and uh, I don't know like what's happening in this. So is there any way you know, that the user would be able to like maybe know what all steps that they have done? Definitely, yeah. Th thanks for bringing that up, Amul. Uh, and this, this was definitely one a feedback that we have received uh, from a few users as well. And that's something that we have already started working on and we should be getting it into the sandbox uh, very soon. Uh, wherein we, we are calling this thing as a progressive type act, wherein uh, the user, when, when they will be able to know which are the actions which they have executed. Uh, and without getting to those actions, they would not be able to skip anything and go ahead in this particular timeline. So that is a progressive experience in the dieback that we are currently working on, which will probably address the exact requirement that you brought up, plus a lot of other users also had, had mentioned uh, uh, right within our help and support system. Uh, that, just to add excellent. to it, I'll just, just add one more point, uh, wherein this dieback is a very critical part in the sandbox. And when a provider wants to onboard any application within the sandbox, this didact creation would make it very easy for a user to experience that particular solution. So we are we are building something as we call as a didact builder, which will also make it easy for a provider, for an asset provider, a solution provider, to be able to create this uh, didact uh, using that builder in a very use, user user friendly way manner, wherein each of these actions in addition to the prerequisite and different section can be easily added and uh, 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 interactive readme could be created and included into that application. So uh, the didact builder and the uh, progressive didact are something that will be coming very soon into the sandbox, which will improve the experience that a developer has on, on this particular platform. Yeah, another question, Gary. So, like, um, when when a, a developer has done some kind of a customization and they want to uh, get a code back to their uh, uh, GitHub repo, currently I see like they have to do th something like maybe manually where yeah. they have to type some Git command. So, uh, let's say if if some developer or or if a tech sailor is not aware about all those Git commands, uh, is there some right. kind of a provision right. that you have? 
Yes. So I, I think that's also in our in our pipeline uh, amount. I think uh, 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 currently, yes, the Git commands are manual, which a developer would need to do. But we will be providing it again as a single click, right? Within this didact, wherein on a single click, the developer would be able to push the complete source code into their Git repository by being able to uh, by being prompted for the repository they want to go to. Uh, the login credentials and then the push would happen automatically via this particular action that we are providing so that's that's again the third one which i should have mentioned that which is which is in progress and should be coming in very soon that that's excellent i think that would be that would be making uh, the life of developer really easy where click of the Definitely. click a button on the didact and they would be able to take the code back yep yeah I, I think this is and this is an excellent application so uh, any, anything else that you want to add, Girish? Um, I think that covers it. I would, I would definitely want folks to try this out and provide their feedback via our help and support system. We would like to hear on, on the feedback anything new uh, that they would want to see, uh, which is, as, as we mentioned about earlier, extensible. They could add any new technologies in it by making uh, that particular thing inside the sandbox and having more solutions that are developed. So sure. uh, quickly, a few few things about if you want to talk about what we want to plan ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, Girish, you covered the the sandbox demo in a very nice way. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, I would I highly recommend all the viewers at this point of time to go and explore uh, the developer uh, technology sandbox on developer.ibm.com/sandbox and provide uh, your feedback. Uh, we would definitely love to hear from you and incorporate more and more new features. So the new features that Girish talked about are part of some of the feedback that we got from developers, from architects, from tech sailors. Uh, apart from the features that uh, Girish, is talk Girish spoke, there are new uh, areas that we want to like cover uh, as a part of our vision, as a part of road ahead that we are looking wherein uh, AI infused solution recommendation based on persona. So like, let's say a, a user uh, who, who is like a developer or a data scientist or an architect, and they are aligned to specific industry based on the persona. So they would be interested in a specific set of asset. So we are trying to infuse as a new feature where uh, AI infused recommendation for anyone coming on the sandbox. So based on the persona, they would be recommended with set of applications or solution that they would be interested in. That's uh, one important feature that currently the team is working on. Second is AI driven progressive asset onboarding wizard. So in order to build the application, you have seen that uh, uh, building an application with an interactive didact, it's a huge amount of work. So we are trying to make this particular process automated where you develop your application and then the onboarding of the application creation of didact would be automated so that's another feature that we are working at this point of time the third uh, most important feature that or, or feature or i would say uh, a, a different set of audience that we are trying to target is a private technology sandbox so think about an enterprise who who is having a lot of assets like uh, the one that we have shown using different technologies and they want to have their own uh, private uh, sandbox. We are working on that as well. We are trying to see that how we can create an operator out of the private technology sandbox, which can be easily deployed on OpenShift uh, environment. And this is specifically addressing the need of enterprises. As we are talking to more and more enterprises, as we are talking to more and more partners and customers, they are they are loving this particular public sandbox and they want to have their own sandbox with their own application. So that's another uh, area that we are working at this point of time. And the, the last one, we would be coming up with new applications uh, as, we, as we are uh, working with different teams around different sales plays, around different areas. So you will see good number of applications coming in with a different functionality. It might be an IBM application. It might be a, a partner application. It might be a combination of IBM and partner technology. You would start seeing new and new applications as we move forward. Uh, so these are the, these are the few things that we are building as a part of our roadmap 
apart from the features that girish uh, girish spoke about those features i think they are going to be available in the first or second week of april and again i would like you to revisit then with the new features that are going to be there thank you so much for watching uh, it's privilege to be uh, on the expert tv and talking about the technology sandbox i would really recommend you again to visit developer.ibm.com/sandbox explore the applications that we have thank you great thank thank you very much uh, amal and girish uh, great exploration of the um, uh, the sandbox and uh, some of the applications and it looks like uh, some pretty cool features are coming down the road so uh, I, I think our audience is going to uh, uh, enjoy uh, exploring those um, going forward. Uh, for those of you who um, are watching today, uh, please, uh, um, I invite you back next week. Uh, we will be exploring um, some new API work that's uh, being done by our uh, research team and uh, invite you to uh, join us for an episode um, related to that. And uh, that'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern time next Thursday. And uh, with that, I again, thank you, Amal and Garish. And uh, to our audience, uh, thank you for attending today's Let's Code episode.